Do you know what the phrases anima and animus mean? In psychology, these two adjectives are frequently used to characterize the feminine and masculine parts of a person's personality. But which is the correct word to use? Both are correct. The feminine element is referred regarded as anima, whereas the masculine aspect is referred to as animus. Anima derives from the Latin term for soul or breath and is associated with a person's underlying feminine attributes. Intuition, emotions, creativity and nurture are examples of these qualities. Animus, on the other hand, is derived from Latin and means spirit or mind and is associated with a person's inherent masculine attributes. Logic, assertiveness, independence and strength are examples of such characteristics. Understanding the concepts of anima and animus can help us better understand how we interact with ourselves and others. We will look at the differences between anima and animus and how they affect our ideas, behaviors and relationships in this post. Describe anima. The term anima comes from the theories of Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung. According to Jung, anima is the feminine part of men's collective unconscious. It embodies all feminine attributes such as intuition, emotion, and creativity. Jung felt that every man had an anima, which signifies his relationship to his psyche's unconscious feminine aspect. The anima is a psychological archetype that influences a man's conduct and attitudes toward women rather than a physical reality. The anima is seen to be important in a man's relationships and interactions with women, as well as his ability to express himself artistically. Jung also believed that the anima is responsible for a man's ability to experience and express emotions. Furthermore, the anima is said to have four stages of development, each representing a different level of psychological awareness. These stages are the Eve, Helen, Mary, and Sophia stages, with each stage representing a different aspect of the feminine psyche. Define the term animus. The concept of animus is the polar opposite of anima, expressing the masculine side of women's collective unconscious. It embodies all masculine attributes, such as rationalism, logic, and assertiveness. Jung felt that every woman had an animus, which signifies her connection to her psyche's unconscious masculine aspect. The animus, like the anima, is not a physical entity, but a psychological archetype that impacts a woman's conduct and views toward men. The animus is thought to be important in a woman's relationships and interactions with males, as well as her ability to assert herself and make decisions. Furthermore, the animus is thought to progress through four stages, each indicating a different level of psychological awareness. These stages are known as the Adam, Hercules, Apollo, and Zeus stages, and each represents a different part of the masculine psyche. How to use words properly in a sentence. Understanding how to use words correctly is vital for good communication. In this section, we will look at how to use anima and animus correctly in a sentence. What is the meaning of anima in a sentence? In psychology, anima is a Latin phrase that refers to the feminine side of the male psyche. Here are some sentence examples of how to utilize anima. 1. Through treatment, John discovered his anima. 2. The artist's work was influenced by his anima. 3. Many males conceal their anima resulting in emotional instability. It is vital to note that anima is only used to describe the male psyche and is never used to describe the personality or behavior of a female. In a sentence, use animus. The Latin term animus is used in psychology to refer to the masculine side of the feminine psyche. Here are some sentence examples of how to utilize animus. 1. Jane's animus was seen in her strong leadership style. 2. The novel's female protagonist grappled with her animus. 3. Many women are trained to conceal their animus, leading to feelings of powerlessness. It is vital to note that the term animus is always applied to the feminine psyche and is never used to describe a male's personality or behavior. You can effectively explain and express psychological topics in your writing and conversations if you grasp the right usage of anima and animus. More sentence examples of anima and animus. In this section, we will look at several instances of how to use the notions of anima and animus in a phrase. These examples will help to clarify the meaning and application of these phrases. Examples of anima in sentences. She had a great connection to her anima, which enabled her to express herself creatively. He was drawn to women who embodied his anima as a reflection of his own feminine side. Her love of nature and desire to nurture others reflected her anima. He struggled to incorporate his anima 
which he perceived to be weak and defenseless, into his masculine persona. She felt complete when she accepted her anima and allowed it to guide her. Examples of animus in sentences. He had a strong sense of duty and obligation, which he interpreted as a reflection of his animus. Her animus was represented in her boldness and ability to take command in challenging situations. Her animus manifested itself in her desire and drive to excel in her career. He considered his animus as a source of strength and power that he could employ to achieve his objectives. Common errors to avoid. There are several frequent misconceptions that individuals make when employing the ideas of anima and animus interchangeably. Knowledge. These blunders is critical to getting a thorough knowledge of the principles and their applications. Mistake number one, confusion between the two concepts. One of the most prevalent errors is to use the terms anima and animus interchangeably. They are connected, but they are not the same. The feminine side of the male psyche is referred to as animus, whereas the masculine aspect of the female mind is referred to as anima. This ambiguity might lead to a misinterpretation of the principles and their implementations. For example, if someone used the term animus to express their feminine side, they would be distorting the notion and potentially misinterpreting their own experiences. Mistake number two is overgeneralizing gender stereotypes. Another mistake individuals make when discussing anima and animus is overgeneralizing gender stereotypes. For example, it is wrong to assume that all women have a strong animus and all men have a strong anima. While these ideas are tied to gender, they are not confined to it. Both men and women have anima and animus elements within them, but the intensity and expression of these aspects varies widely from person to person. Mistake 3. Ignoring the shadow aspects. A third error is disregarding the dark components of anima and animus. The shadow is a key part of understanding these concepts since it alludes to the unconscious and repressed aspects of the psyche. Ignoring the shadow components of anima and animus can result in a skewed understanding of the ideas and their applications. It is critical to investigate and integrate these shadow components in order to completely comprehend and use the notions of anima and animus. Tips for avoiding these errors. To avoid making these typical errors, approach the concepts of anima and animus with an open mind and a willingness to investigate and learn. One. Reading and studying the works of Carl Jung and other specialists in the field will help you avoid making these blunders. 2. Self-reflection and introspection to investigate your own anima and animus elements. 3. Avoiding oversimplification of gender stereotypes and assumptions. 4. Investigating and incorporating the dark components of anima and animus. You can obtain a deeper knowledge of these vital concepts and their applications by avoiding these typical blunders and approaching the concepts of anima and animus with an open mind and a willingness to learn. Context matters. When addressing the concepts of anima and animus, it is vital to note that their usage can vary drastically depending on the situation. While the broad definitions of these terms are fairly similar, their use varies widely depending on the situation. Examples of various contexts. In the field of psychology, the distinction between anima and animus may be altered. The terms anima and animus are frequently employed in this subject to characterize the feminine and masculine elements of an individual's psyche respectively. In this situation, the decision between anima and animus may be influenced by the individual's gender as well as the specific psychological features under consideration. Another area where the distinction between anima and animus may differ is in literature and storytelling. In this sense, the terms anima and animus are frequently employed to represent archetypal feminine and masculine characters seen in many works of fiction. In this case, the choice between anima and animus might depend on the specific story being analyzed, as well as the author's intent in using these archetypes. Another scenario in which the decision between anima and animus may differ is spirituality and religion. Some faiths employ the terms anima and animus to express the feminine and male parts of the divine, respectively. The decision between anima and animus in this situation may be influenced by the specific tradition under consideration, as well as the individual's personal views and experiences. As can be seen, the decision between anima and animus can vary substantially depending on the situation. While these terms have a broad meaning, their application varies widely depending on the situation. 
we can obtain a deeper appreciation for the intricacy and richness of these notions by knowing these intricacies. Exceptions to the law. While most people can apply the concept of anima and animus, there are some cases where the principles may not apply. Among these exclusions are, one, individuals who identify as non-binary. Traditional gender roles and archetypes linked with anima and animus may not apply to those who identify as non-binary or genderqueer. These individuals may or may not have a strong connection to either the masculine or feminine archetypes. The concepts of anima and animus may not be relevant or helpful in comprehending their psychology in certain circumstances. 2. Individuals from various cultural backgrounds. The concept of anima and animus is established in Western psychology and may not be applicable to people from other cultures. Gender roles and stereotypes may be defined differently or not at all in some cultures. As a result, using anima and animus to analyze the psyche of people from these cultures may be inappropriate. 3. Individuals suffering from psychological disorders. Individuals suffering from certain psychological diseases, such as schizophrenia or dissociative identity disorder, may have a skewed sense of self and lack a distinct or stable gender identity. The concepts of anima and animus may not be relevant or helpful in comprehending their psychology in certain circumstances.